underway. So there is the Kha'Zix. We saw it locked in already. It will be the Jax, of course, for Youngbuck in that top lane. With Renekton taken away, Jax is a strong pick. So I really like Jax now here in 4.5 because your scaling runes make you even stronger in the late game. And it means when you're building players during King and Trinity Force, because you got scaling uh, HP runes, you got scaling magic resist, for instance, you're going to be more tanky in the late game just by having the runes. So it makes you very strong even though you build a lot of damage. And that's where Jax really, really shines. And that's also why when they ban away the Renekton, who's the early game bully against Jax, simply saying, we locked this one in here and now Youngbug is confident he can duel Wicked no matter what he picks. Oh, big Farmer has been locked in. It Ziggs has had some changes. Slight reduction in his range of his basic attack, but it's his own minor, minor change. Wasn't hit as hard as someone like Lulu, which is probably why he hasn't gone towards it. But Kaltard has played Yasuo very well in the LCS. The last showing he had of it, I wonder if they're going to be thinking of this one again. But if they do log into Yasuo here, they need some more things to set up his ultimate, because so far the first two champions here won't do anything. Of course, there's one of them, Zing Zhao with his ultimate, can activate it here for Yasuo, so he can jump in, join the fight. So that's a very, very, very strong combo from Copenhagen Wolves already, just by having Yasuo and Zing Zhao together. Also, the damage you can do in the small skirmishes around, around someone like Ziggs, you can just jump onto him and kill him. Yeah, Shin Zhao definitely is a champion that's coming to his own, I feel, in 4.5. Twitch is a champion that's been very strong over in the Korean scene, the North American scene. We saw them back in the past Super Week, just before the playoffs, playing it fairly heavily. Has a very good win rate, and as of yet, haven't seen a great showing of it in Europe. But one thing I really like about this Twitch, if they lock it in, combine that with Kha'Zix, you got double stealth here to set something up. You have Wicked split pushing in the side on Shivana. You have Frog and Wavelength in the mid lane. And then roaming between these two lanes, you got the AD carry and you got the jungler on scene when they get close here and they can join in for fights. They can surprise someone. All of a sudden, they can be free people top lane against poor old Youngbug who's trying to defend 1v1 against Wicked. He gets piled on, he gets killed, and they start pushing down. So this lineup here from Alliance is going to be like a 1-4 split push and then with both Twitch and K6 roaming around, trying to set something up once they actually get out of the laning phase. The only issue for Alliance is that Twitch, when it comes to hitting the turrets or sieging the turrets, is not the best because you don't have any escapes. So once you're actually standing there hitting the turret, if they engage onto you with Sing Zhao, with Yasuo jumping, with Jax, you're not gonna get out. Everybody piling on you, one of those squishy targets, be it a Ziggs or a Twitch, will be very weak and will get popped very quickly. Well, last your pick will be the support. It looks like it may well be Karma once again for Unlimited. It's a champion we've seen him playing to varied success throughout the season. He was pretty much one of the first to yeah. pick it up very early on to limited success. And then obviously it seems to have switched into the meta as the patches have rolled by. And the thing with Karma here, especially with someone like Caitlyn, is in 4.5, lane swaps is very, very standard. It's very, I actually expect to see more lane swaps than standard lanes here early on in the 4.5 patch. So with Karma, with Caitlyn, of course, you have a lot of poke onto whoever is you are fighting against in a 2v1. You have good tower damage, both are ranged here, and they're very safe because both can escape from ganks. If they do get 2v2, Karma will provide a lot of poke, and now that AD carries don't really run life steal quints anymore, poke is going to mean a lot more, because if you take some, some damage early on, you won't be able to sustain it as easily as you could before. Well, I mean, Wolves are one of the teams that were doing the lane swaps very yeah. early on, and throughout the season, honestly. But Jax is a tough 2v1 pick. Well, Jax should be able to get some farm in it, and then with his teleport, he's going to be able to go back to base if he gets poked down, get a few potions, get his first item, and come back then to the turret, get some more farm here. And obviously the same thing is go for Shivana. Both of them should be denied early on. It's a bit risky to dive at Jax due to his stun, but at the same time, if they actually get onto him, he's still fairly squishy early. We could also be seeing what's been happening in North America and Korea is, is the top laner joins the bottom lane yeah, to just shove on down them towers. So we'll see how it works out for them. It is going to be an interesting game. It's the first quarterfinal of the playoffs and the players are just about to enter the rift for the first match in the series. So let's check in lolesports.com to see who you think will be the best of three winner here. The first game, it is going to be Alliance, of course. 81%, no surprise there. They are the third place finishers. They are the favorites and they should be. I mean, I think many people expect Alliance to either 2-0 or at least 2-1 advance on and then face is a Fnatic in the next round here. So for me as well, Alliance will be the favorites. But going into the game, looking at their composition, I get a little bit scared 
because whenever they actually want to hit a turret, there's so much pile on engage on potential here from Copenhagen Wolves to just get onto Twitch, get onto Zix, and just blow them up instantly. And what an interesting game it is for Shook as well, coming into this matchup. He, of course, was on the Copenhagen Wolves before the spring split began. Back in October, he chose to make that choice. He switched across, so he could be on either side of the winning team here. Not too sure how it will work out for him, but here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to get in the game. Game one of the quarterfinal playoffs here in the spring split. Alliance on the blue time facing off against the Copenhagen Wolves as the red team. So both teams clearly looking for something here, level one, because you got wards on both supports, so they're going to get some early vision here. Late invades is very popular here, especially also after the trinket changes, you don't have any vision. It's safer to just late invade with your team than just wait around and make sure you can get something and get the right lane swap. And now actually Copenhagen Wolves moving in already with five members. Kautz out a little bit behind, but Nif spotted them out. Well, it is going to be a five-man push from the Wolves. They have got that early ward and they've put that early ward placement down on the red. You can see the ward also picked up by Nif, so looking to maybe do that same thing. And we'll see whether Alliance go for that late invade or whether they push straight in towards their red buff as of yet. They are staying in there when you just saw the entire Copenhagen Wolves team backing to base. And I think Copenhagen Wolves want to try and bait the Lions to think they're still waiting in here at the red buff. So they want the Lions to move up to their own red buff and then possibly collapse on them. But it seems though the team is still moving as a group now, going towards the blue buff here, hoping to find the Lions. Well, meanwhile Alliance are making their own moves. This is a lot of counter tactical play going on between these teams. It is going to be the blue buff start for the Copenhagen Wolves. You saw Jungbuk being the first man to go in towards that bush. He wanted to be the front man. Meanwhile, we are seeing Wicked Shook, Tabs, and Nif, four men piling in towards that red buff. And you can see, neither teams really have each other's position. Nobody knows where anyone is right now. But again, this is the thing we see so often now with the trinket changes, because you don't have vision. It's You need to go in with your team to late invade, because if you just stay back in your lanes and wait, and the other team then late invades on you, you're going to lose three buffs. So you need to make the move yourself, and Copenhagen Wolves, of course, due to the ward down here, they know Alliance is not starting red buff, so they can do the blue here and then rotate down because that dual lane is also down in the bottom, so they can go in and, and fight if something should happen at the red buff of Alliance here. So, very standard start for both teams. Yeah, it does mean, of course, we have that 2v1 lane swap. It's actually Alliance that have initiated the lane swap as well. So they've chosen to take Tabs and Nif into that top lane. It does mean that Youngbook's going to be having problems. Instead, he's taking on the white down the bottom, so he's going to make sure he gets to level 2, or try to get to level 2. He's not going to quite get there with just the white and back off, and he can just rejoin that top lane. Amazing is going for that counter invade straight in there, and of course, Shook nowhere to be seen. He's taking away the blue. And both junglers now are in a good position to move up to the dual lane and then simply just force down the turret because blue buff here, 4 cut 6 oh, for Shook. He can just move up, of course. Same goes for Amazing down the bottom lane here. There's no there's no solo lane though from Alliance side down the bottom yet. They're just building up a big wave from Kome and side, and then if Wicked shows, they're going to go in and just deny him all the seas and force him away. And Shook, he wants to do the same. Yeah, they've both done identical tactics so far. Continuing, but Youngbox this time is going to get caught out here. He's gone for Counter-Strike as a level one because he wanted to catch people out in the bushes, and that's going to cause him problems. Shook flashing for this one. He thinks he can get another unseen threat. He's got Minion Wave in it. I don't think he's quite oh, going to have to dive on towards the turret there. And he isn't quite going to have enough, and Nif was so close to getting that exhaust down. But a mistake here from Youngbok, because he should have known Shook would have double buff already and moved towards this top lane, or there was a high chance he would be in this top lane, because his own jungler already had the double buff. So, a bit risky play by him to go down toward, and almost cost him his life. Safe play from Wicked, meanwhile, in that bottom lane. He doesn't want to get close. He's got zero CS right now, but he is playing it very safe, sitting on the inner turret. And that's actually going to be a problem because you can see Copenhagen Wolves are already up to that one. This is going to be the tower pushing we've seen so often through the Korean scene and the North American scene recently. Yeah, and the bottom lane turret, of course, takes more damage than the top lane one, so Copenhagen Wolves are pushing faster. Amazing, rejoining them here. Sing Zhao is very strong in pushing the turrets early on here, so they get a lot of damage. They will take this one without any problems because of course Midland's just farming. Alliance they want to trade for this turret up in top. Yeah they should have enough minions. Second wave is coming in there. You can see Wicked staying very well deep away from this one. Youngbook doing the same, trying to get just a little bit close enough to try and maybe sniff some of the experiences the tower hits it, but it's still very cautious. There's the second turret of the game for Alliance. So both they teams have to equal. They have to go back because the Wolves, they're going to keep pushing here. Yeah, Alliance, 
either they want to trade the turrets here because Copenhagen Wolves, they will pick this one up very easily. We can't do anything. Nif taking turrets. He's... Oh, the last hit actually went to Shook here. It's always a problem for the top lane team that pushes along. That inhibitor turret is going to go down. The Copenhagen Wolves in five minutes have taken the first inhib turret of the game. They've got the inhibitor now. Alliance, they didn't recall yet. Jumping onto Wicked. This could be massive problems. They get the three talent strike. They're bouncing. They get the first blood down. The Copenhagen Wolves are going to push on towards the inhibitor. Alliance has still only just gone back. If they can get that inhib down, those super minions will wreck everyone in the bottom lane. Big, big mistakes from Alliance here. After the second turret went down in the top lane, they should have recalled instantly. Gun down here, tried to defend this turret. Instead, Copenhagen Wolves, big advantage early on, and also picking up the first ball onto Wicked. Such safe play by Wicked for so long, and then just as he caught out a little bit too close. Frog and meanwhile in this mid lane, we haven't seen a great deal of him because this has been very much not where they've so focus of action for them. But Froggen is keeping up the farm. And at the moment, Kaltard is doing a grand job on Yasuo. You can see, got the edge over Froggen. Only so slightly, though. It's literally one CS difference. Tabs rejoining, and this is what we may see Alliance do. They may rotate everyone into that mid. But look here, Alliance, they don't know where to go because Wicked, he's trying to freeze the lane all the way down the bottom. There's, of course, no turret, so the lane won't actually reset. It's only the damage from Wicked going against the minions here, so that's why he can keep this way for quite a while. Unless Copenhagen will decide to make a move. Seems they're just Moving for Dragon, very good move, especially also because they spot all the members of Alliance now up in the top lane here. So map-wise, Copenhagen Wolves with a big advantage early on, and they don't they don't care about Wicked freezing down this bottom lane. Well, that Dragon will go down. It's the first one of the game in six minutes twenty-three. There is so many things starting off so so quick in this game. Ooh. Young Buck gonna get caught out with a slow here. May get hooked in. Nif is gonna go for it. Does manage to land the death sentence. That's Young Buck going down. He's not gonna escape this one. Counter Strike will come in, but you can see. Tabs is finishing it down, and Shook gets himself the kill. So kill for Shook here. Very nice response. Young Buck, he stayed out a little bit too far to try and farm here. We haven't actually touched about the mid laners. Very even so far. Good farm for both of them. Kaltar actually doing very well getting farm here earlier and putting a lot of pressure onto Froggen, even though Zix is having this auto type poke onto him, but he's still doing a very good job just farming away. Amazing, also doing a great job of counter jungle and stealing away everything from Shook's jungle as he's just shown himself in that top lane. Of course, Shook did just get that kill. Both junglers now with the kill, and of course, Feral Flare being built up by Amazing. Yeah, so Riggles already for Amazing early on because three turrets. He got the first blood, of course. He got six stacks on it already. He needs the 25 stacks before it turns into the Feral Flare, and that's where he really becomes strong in these duels. So he can just farm up now because Copenhagen Wolves. Because of the way it went now, with them moving the duel in up top here, full control of Nif and Taps, they don't really need to fear anything except for Shook, because Froggen in the mid lane and Zix, he's not exactly one who's going to roam away. He needs to stay and farm. And, and let's just not discount the big, big difference here. It's the fact that one of those inhibitor turrets are down already. An exposed inhibitor is such a dangerous thing. It causes so many tactical problems for Alliance. They can't push heavily in top lane because they're going to leave that bottom exposed that somebody could sneak into. And someone like Kaltard and maybe Youngbuck, once they get a lot of items, just even maybe two or three major items, will take things down so quickly. Exactly. That's going to be the key moment. It doesn't really matter for now because nobody really has the damage and don't really they can't duel anyone to get yeah. all the way up to the inhibitor for now but later on if young can then beat wicked in a 1v1 he will get just a free weight all the way down to, to the inhibitor and then force alliance to send someone back to defense so in about 10 15 minutes it can actually start to become an issue for alliance as long as they don't fall behind it's a three-man stack from the walls in the top lane this time Let's see if they can sneak their way around there. Shook is close by, but Amazing is looking to make one of those plays. We talked about how he's involved in so many kills for the Copenhagen Wolves, and this may be another one, but a three-man dive here would be a very dangerous thing. You've got the flay from Nip, could stop them in their tracks, and Shook, you can see, waiting in the tri -push. It was very good research by Alliance here, because Copenhagen Wolves, whenever they do the lane swaps and get the first turret, they always swap back to the dual lanes, going against each other, and then they send Amazing down, and they try and get the turret, because they love this fast Push, fast push early on. So now Alliance, they pinged him out, and at the same time, oh, Kaltar going aggressive. Kaltar using that ult to be able to look at that straight away. The exhaust goes down from Frog, and he's going to try and turn some of that damage back around. The Mega Inferno Bomb not quite landing and finding his target, and Kaltar pretty much getting out that one untouched. Yeah, exhaust onto Frog, and exhaust onto Nif. That's 50% damage reduction onto Yasuo when he jumps into his ultimate. So they're going to be able to shut down a lot of his burst damage. And that's going to make it very hard for Kaltar to go into fights. We saw actually how little damage he did, did to Frog. It was just one health potion, he was back. But 
That ultimate of Yasuo is very quick, whereas the exhaust is going to be much, much longer. He didn't use the ignite that time around, so Kaltard may just be trying to burn that one out and would have made the call, of course. And Kaltard, with Young Buck roaming around in that red buff, they are going to try and take this opportunity and push in because there's not really a great deal they can do about it other than try and steal it away with the bomb. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised uh, we see Shug actually using so much time up in his top lane. Combinate Wolves can take this red buff for free because they spotted Shug going in towards the engage up in the top lane here. And you invest so much time onto a Caitlyn and Karma lane, so, mo so mobile, so easy to escape. And at the same time, you got heal and exhaust. It's going to be very hard to kill them. Yeah, and if they could have burnt out the flash, which I believe Kautar was aiming out for Frog, and it's a scary, scary time for Ziggs to have a Jax, a Zin Zhao, and a Yasuo all jumping yeah. on you in mid lane. And he's fairly exposed right now, which is why they haven't got any wards. You can see the river anywhere around him, so they could easily hit them level 9, 10 modes, which they are getting into, and just tower dive on towards him. And I'll just continue to do what they're doing in the top lane here. They just push the wave down instantly with Karma and Caitlyn and get a few hits on the turret, back off, do it again the next wave. Nif was actually forced to recall, so Shook once again is near this top lane to try and help defend. But Cobra Wolves for now just continue pushing down. And this pressure at the top, look at it. Shook's having to stay here. Youngbug, he's not really had a wave to clear. He's doing the counter jungling. He's farming out Shook's jungle while he's up there. Meanwhile, the rest of Copenhagen Wolves are keeping pressure on. Spray and play being used by Tabs just to clear the top wave. Did some very good damage, but once again now, Amazing joining in this top lane. Copenhagen Wolves, they love to get these early turrets. That's how, that's how they put pressure on the map. Once this turret is down, they want to rotate to the mid lane and do the same. It's going to be harder against the Ziggs because there's so much wave clear, but at least they have con continue to just apply pressure everywhere. It's been a great start for the Copenhagen Wolves. Nif dying to get a ward into that bush, and if he does, he'll oh. pull it straight on Amazing's face. They do get to clear it out, but he gave him the information that they required. <laughs> Second one gets cleared out. Well, it's a good job he managed to buy that Sight Stone as his first item. So again, Copenhagen Wolves actually stay in the lane. They didn't back. Taps been forced to stay too. Look at him. He doesn't even have a B of sword yet. He's probably got a lot of gold, but he didn't get time to go back and shop because if he does, his tower is gone. That's it. There's no way to defend the turret without it. Yeah, you can see just shy of 2,000 gold on him. Look in this mid lane. We have the three pronged attack coming in. Amazing Young Book and Kaltard all circling around the Froggen, who is somewhat vulnerable in that mid lane. Shook is nearby and that pink ward is being protected. They've got to make sure that is clear. They don't want anyone jumping on them. But with that six minute dragon they got early on, this is another very quick dragon from the wolves. Yeah, there's no timer from Alliance side because they had zero vision when they took the first dragon here. And at the same time, look at Frog and he's completely warm in the mid lane. No blue buff, won't be able to regen it. So very easy, very safe dragon for Corbinate Wolves. And they're just outplaying Alliance on the map. You know, and something we were talking about, we've been talking about off air all week, honestly, is this Feral Flare item. We heard Jack talking about it. We didn't really expect it to make a big impact because the teams won't allow you to farm for a lot so long. But Amazing got it very early on. He's had freedom of the entire jungle, both sides of the jungle almost. So that's, he's going to get stacked out very quickly. The fact that they've taken two dragons down already as well is a big, big difference because Shook hasn't gone towards it. He's not feeling he's going to be required. He's basically been running a babysitting job in the top lane. But it's also uh, champion-wise a bit different. Elder Lizard is actually bid onto Kha'Zix. First of all, you don't really need the attack speed from Feral Flare. And at the same time, your Q actually doesn't activate the proc here. So you're more ability-based. That's why Elder Lizard will do more. Whereas Zing Zhao, of course, very auto-tech focused. But Alliance now pushing onto this mid lane. Covenant Wolves are here though, to try and wave clear. Well, the Wolves finally alleviated some of that pressure in that top lane. Alliance managed to try and take that opportunity to push into mid lane turret. They have four members here. Wicked's also doing this split push. This is what we talked about at the beginning of the game. They're going to go for that 4-1 split. It's not going to work out this time around, but that's a, a glimpse into Alliance's tactical presence this early on. And for the tactic to work for Alliance, they really need these auto turrets going because they need to have Shook and, and Taps who can roam between the lanes. As long as the auto turrets are here, it's going to be very hard for him to sneak down unless Youngbug is standing all the way up at the inhibitor from Alliance side, which obviously he won't. So they need these auto turrets gone, they need some deep wards, and then they can start roaming around. So uh, so how do we counter this? Because we haven't had a chance to see Wicked up against Youngbug a great deal. They haven't really butted heads once in the lane. Obviously, we know Shivana has a weaker early game. We're hitting level 9 for now, so it's going to start coming into her own. But 
So up against the Jax, Jax gets stronger and stronger and becomes an immovable object. Yeah, Jax becomes very, very strong, especially damage-wise, which is where if someone like Taps goes down to try and kill him, he needs to be very careful, because if Youngberg jumps onto him, he's going to have enough damage to just instantly kill him. And Taps is actually down in this bottom lane now. At the moment, though, without Blade of the Rune King onto Jax, he should be fine. But once the Blade of the Rune King is completed, that's where he needs to be careful. When it comes to Wicked here, he wants to make sure he can survive. Young Buck in these fights, but the sustain from Jax with a Blade Rune King late game is going to out-sustain Shivana. Well, there's a gank opportunity being set up by the Wolves here. Tabs and Nifshuk is nearby. He's just been doing the golems and they're suspecting the Young Buck's there. Counter-Strike, jump in straight on towards him. The moment they see the third man show up, they do manage to back away. Nice a good ultimate from Amazing slows him down, but Shook's going to get the speed boost here. Mega Inferno Bomb comes in from Froggen. It's going to land, but it's not going to do the damage. Copenhagen Wolves avoid that. A gank opportunity set up, countered very nicely by Alliance. Yeah, very good counter against Shook. He's moving around with this duel and from Alliance all the time. They're expecting Copenhagen Wolves to target Taps and Nif over and over again, so he just stays with them. And now they can actually push onto this turret. Teleport already used on Youngbok. He won't be able to do anything to defend it, and nobody's nearby. So this is a turret for, for Alliance. And we will up in the top lane. Copenhagen Wolves need to just push down and get the turret themselves. Counter, counter play and pushed in and Wicked went very deep. He's expecting to stay in this top lane for a long time. He just put a ward in the tri-bush and at the red buff. And well, if you know Wicked, he doesn't tend to put wards out too often. So that is very deep stuff from him. He's expecting to stay very busy in that top lane while the Alliance, they keep on pushing. And remember, these bottom lane turrets, they are weaker. Hook onto Youngbook there. Counter-Strike's gonna come out. That will dodge some of the basic attacks. Still a lot of damage done towards him. And that may be the turret, but Kaltar's gonna come across. The presence is there. Remember, Mega Inferno Bomb was used already, not off cooldown just yet, but Kaltar can't leave this lane long because Frogger will keep pushing. Just continue pushing in with Zix all the time. You can just look how fast he clears the wave, so you can always push in if Yasuo moves away. Wicked is left alone up in the top lane. He's actually pushing the wave very far down already. Yeah, going very deep on that one. As I mentioned, he got those wards out, so he's got the coverage. There is a pink ward just above him, so they have vision of where Wicked is, but remember, there's no towers, nothing to go down. He can just keep shoving that turret down. So. Two other turrets are gone. Only the mid lane one is left. Yasuo, it's very hard for him to defend, at least if he's alone in there against the Zix, against the Twitch. They will be able to take the turret now. So look at Lions instantly just moving all the members into this mid lane here because they want to push it up, want to get the last out of turret, and then really start roaming around with deep wards and try and catch Copenhagen Wolves out. If they can shut down Youngbuck from getting his Trinity Force now as next item, if they can delay it by quite a lot, then the power spike of Jax you know, as long as you're delayed, you get a lot of free time. You get at least like 10, 15 minutes where you can roam around and control the map before he gets this Trinity Force and he can start kill Wicked 1v1. Wicked, meanwhile, putting down a signal of intent going all on tank. All this mail coming out along with that Sunfire Cape. He is going to be the man jumping in there. Expect to see the Randian Zerman completed shortly as soon as he goes back to continue that wave farm. Alliance, though, have managed to get themselves, claw themselves back into this game. It is he. What, three and a half thousand gold differential that you wouldn't know it, honestly, because we haven't seen these teams yet fight, and they've just continually been both pushing each other's opposition lanes, and Froggen being caught out there. Does get the A's in the hole used. That does, of course, mean that Alliance know that Copenhagen Wolves are stacking. They want to try and create a play here. The Dragon is up in 20 seconds. Of course, Alliance have no timers on that one at all. And the ward here, unless they actually checked it on the minimap, they will, of course, see it spawn. But if Copenhagen Wolves is waiting already with multiple members, they should be able to kill before Alliance is in a position. They know it's going to spawn soon because Copenhagen Wolves are already moving here, clearing out wards. Look at Froggen, though. Entire Copenhagen Wolves moved away from the middle lane. He just stayed, pushed it up. Shoved it straight back down their faces. and. The Wolves are maybe thinking of making a play here. Carefully, of course. Blue Wolf will go back across to Amazing. Kaltar not interested in that, doesn't really want it. Or is he going to take it this time around? Nope, Amazing will take it once again. And Alliance have got themselves back into the Dragon. They've swept it out. They see it spawn now, so they know the fight is on. Yeah, they know the fight is on. Both in a good position. Look at Wicked already moving down from the top lane. There is Teleport and Youngbok, but it still takes some time for him to join the fight if Alliance should engage onto Copenhagen Wolves here. They did start the Dragon, backing off for now. Vision control wise, both teams are fairly well, in a fairly good position. Look at the wards behind the lines here, so Copenhagen Wolves know exactly what they're doing. And but given wise, he's staying here. Taps almost catching him out. Trying to go for it again, the dragon being pulled. There's still no wards for Youngbook to actually teleport to. They're going to keep getting cleared out. He's continuing to push that top lane though. He's going to start putting pressure on towards the inner turret if this fight gets delayed much longer. 
Yeah, so Wicked didn't decide to stay up in the top lane here. He actually moved down, even though his teleport is ready. So I'm not sure why he was afraid to stay in the 1v1. And it simply meant because Copenhagen was just delayed the dragon. Wicked now been forced to move all the way back here. And he's got some good hits onto the turret from Youngbox side as well. well both can interrupt one another. Of course, the counter strike has to land at the right time by Youngbox. Wicked, of course, can just use that dragon descent to pounce across if Jax were to try and teleport. Pink Ward being used by the Wolves and the Dragon being started once again. It doesn't know whether it's coming and going right now because there is a lot of damage being done to it this time. Copenhagen Wolves are going to try and make a play on this one. Inner Flame being used. Ace in the hole landed on Shook. They're going to dive. They're going to jump straight on towards it. Shook just gets massacred straight down there. Wicked exhausted out. He's just going to simply pounce out. Whoa. Counter Strike from Youngbook stuns up all four members of Alliance. And now Amazing. He's going to be the focus target. He has to get out. Wicked turns that one back around. It's a one for one. Both junglers down. But you saw the power from both teams there. Very dangerous stuff there. That team fight could have turned it for either team. But it's going to be the turret here for Lions. And also the Dragon is still alive. So it's a win for them with this fight. Because they managed to kite all the way out. The box from Nif came up here. Coming was they couldn't chase onto it. And then Amazing went over aggressive. He went into the face of four members from Alliance in, in the end. Look here at the fight. Look how much Coming was invest onto killing Shuki in the start. Yasuo ultimate. Everything is popped. He's dead. And from, from here on and out, because Alliance can now kite backwards, and because all the damage Taps have been doing from the backline here with his spray and prey, the Covering Wolves, they can't really follow up on this. Good start by Youngbug, but then look at the box here. Who's gonna follow through this one? Amazing feels like he's strong enough, he jumps in, the rest of Covering Wolves already backed off, so he's just an easy kill for, for Alliance, and then a turret. And you gotta feel that early exhaust that went down. It went on Wicked, not really the one you wanted to go for. Absolutely tabs with that spray and pray running. Yeah. He's the one get that won him it. Exhausted. Didn't quite get it onto the right target, so maybe maybe an error, maybe a lapse of judgment, who knows? But it was a very tight fight. And as I mentioned, the Copenhagen Wolves, the fact they had that three, four K gold advantage going into that fight, didn't really show it there. They invested so much onto killing Shook that once he was actually dead, they had nothing to jump on to taps. Yes, okay. Youngbuck jumped there, but he was alone. He was the only one who could actually jump in. The rest of the team was left behind. So they didn't have anything to follow up with. That's why when, when the Alliance could kite them out, just kite backwards, and then collapse onto Covenant Wolves when they made a mistake. It simply meant they could actually go even in the fight and then take the turret later on. And oh no, great play by Lance. And they got this out of turret now. So all three out of turrets are gone. This is where we can see them now start roaming around the map. Feral Flare completed by Amazing. We'll see whether he makes use of it. What do we make of all the items that have been picked up? Bear in mind, this is we're obviously to 4.5. There's been a number of changes to several items out there, but we're still seeing fairly standard builds. Of course, you look at Tabs, he's slightly behind in Forgiven. We know that Kaltar, once he gets that Infinity Edge completed, he is going to be a big danger, but Froggen, he's already set. Froggen got a lot of damage already. He can go into a Lich Bane now. Once he completed, he got the free core damage items from Ziggs. Late game, he can even go Lich Bane if he wants even more burst. So he's really, really strong and he can really wave clear everything now. He can just throw his bomb to the side lanes as well if Youngbug gets too much pressure onto Wicked here. Kautal actually moving up. Again, no Infinity Edge yet. He needs to employ his Virus but Youngbug going in. He's going to get stunned up. Is it going to be enough though? He uses that Dragon Descent just to pounce away the moment that Kautal showed himself. He didn't want any of that. He is pretty tanky. He's the tankiest member by far of Alliance. They've invested all of that gold, but they have to worry about this three-pronged attack right now. We're going to see the Ziggs bomb coming out here. The Mega Inferno bomb will be used by Froggen to clear this wave, I feel. The moment they all show themselves, they can't let them just get free time on this tower. They are going to, and that's going to mean in a turret to Copenhagen Walls. Easily done. Very easy turret for Wolves here. Froggen wasn't with the team over here. He tried to stay there. He actually did nothing. Taps though, getting some good damage onto the turret. Needs to back off. No minions. He was actually tanking a few hits. Ace in the hole used out there and the rest of the Wolves are rotating around. Froggen was trying to push on down to try and make a play there and instead almost got caught out in the mid lane as the three members, the three assassins, the three amigos of Copenhagen Wolves all look to dive in towards that little yordle in the mid lane. Yeah, so uh, Froggen looked a little bit confused here. First he wanted to move towards the top lane to defend, but he didn't actually commit to it. Then he went back to the mid lane, then he moved slightly over here to the bottom lane where the rest of his team was. But he never really moved there, he just stayed in the mid lane. It meant they gave up a turret and didn't actually get anything in return. The one thing, the one worry maybe for the Copenhagen Wolves is if this game does go longer than they are, of course, have no ability power other than Unlimited, who we have seen actually building fairly magic heavy on uh, Karma in the past, but that's a long way out, and again, it's a big differential that Alliance could maybe try and defend towards. As it stands, 
Wicked, he's trying to continue pushing on that top wave, doing a great job keeping that farm going. But Youngbook is keeping with him every step of the way, and you can see Youngbook's really starting to put some serious, serious dents in towards Wicked's armor. Yeah, and Wicked, of course, as you just said yourself, went full armor because there's so much physical damage on Cobra and Wolves. So some of the magic damage here from Jax actually does quite a lot to him. That's why Youngbook can so easily duel him as well. And of course, he will out sustain him. There's no Blades Rune King on Wicked side, there's no life steal. So in every one we want here, Youngbug with the edge. That's why you see Wicked trying to pick up the farm he can, push out whenever Youngbug is not there. When he shows up, he just backs off. He's not gonna stay here and try and duel him. And there's nothing being done to slow down that uh, Trinity Force that's being built up by Youngbug. The Infinity Edge has now been completed by Kaltard with the Dragon up in two minutes time. We're already seeing the walls moving into position, sweeping out wards. They have no intention of going for that Baron, but it's something we should start thinking about because this is a team that could take Baron very quickly. Oh yeah, Jax, Xing Zhao, Fail Flare onto uh, Xing Zhao, of course, Blade Rune King onto Jax. You have so much damage onto the Baron here, so if only, if Cobra and Wolves can keep the rest of Alliance away, just two members of them can actually take the Baron very easily. So Alliance really needs to be careful and always keep vision in this area here. Wow, Froggen getting caught there. Just one shot from Forgiven, and of course the whirlwind coming out from Kaltar took him down to just shy of half health, and that is a big, big danger sign. And Froggen is going a very manly build. Zero armor, no Zonyas, <laughs> nothing here, so that's why the damage from Kaltar onto him is very, very high, and if they actually jump onto Froggen, He's gonna explode instantly. So he needs to stay back. Once again, being caught out here. Kaza could have jumped in with ultimate if, of course, the rest of Alliance wasn't nearby. Oh, I mean, Tab's stepping in to take the ace in the hole. That triggered half the hit points off him as well. So that's actually put both carries low on health, which is why the Copenhagen Wolves are thinking they fancy this one. They're buying time for Youngbo to keep on pushing. Remember, that's the exposed inhibitor in the bottom lane. They took that one very early on, five minutes into the game. If he gets on that inhib, he will take it down very quickly. Oh, Tap sneaking in here. He wants to go for Forgiven. Mega Inferno bomb thrown down. There's the slow spray and play. It's going to be flashed on towards. Wow. It's just enough to take down Unlimited, but that's only a support. They still have a Jax pushing down the bot lane. But this was the stealth, the sneaky thing we talked about in Champs like that Alliance can do when they want to start something, want to catch someone out of surprise. But they need to recall because this Jax is just hammering away. It is going to be Froggen backing off. The rest of the team are going to try and push. No, Froggen's going to be stopped there. They're going to dive in. Copenhagen Wolves are going to keep the pressure on. Amazing goes deep. They're just simply delaying Alliance from recalling back to base because Youngbuck is in there. He's finally been stopped out. Froggen got there, but the inhib goes down. And 10 minutes ago, we said whenever Youngbuck gets so strong, he can 1v1 anyone. That's where Alliance needs to be careful. That's where they need to be able to defend this inhibitor. And they weren't. So this is a very easy inhibitor for Cobra and Wolves. And now going for the Dragon. Yeah, Alliance all low health, remember. Shook can't really jump into this one. That Dragon, look how much damage goes off it already. That's just two members of the Copenhagen Wolves. Good wind wall going up. They're stopping the hook coming out from Nif. That Dragon is going to be taken out. Froggen with Mega Inferno Bomb not available. It's on cooldown. Shook's teleporting away. Yeah. Alliance have give up on this one. And the Wolves get themselves another advantage over Alliance. They now hold that 4k goal difference. But looking at three out of the last four Dragons. Dragons all going to them. Froggen was stuck down in the bottom lane, so he couldn't join in for the fight. So the rest of Cobra Wolves just backed off. Cobra Wolves, though, are the rest of Alliance backed off. But Cobra Wolves are not done. They're pushing here. They keep on pushing towards it. They've just took shreds of health off that turret. Alliance finally rotating defense, but they are chasing this game right now. Copenhagen Wolves seem to finally, once they get past that 15 to 25 minute mark yep. we talked about so often, they have an unsure moment of time, but now they've got enough farm, enough big items on the key champions, they seem to be going aggressive. And this is where we need to question the whole lineup here from Alliance side, because with Shivana against Jax, it's such a hard matchup for Wicked to do anything now, and the whole tactic for Alliance was going to be Wicked would do well in his split push, and then Froggen would wave through the mid lane, and then Kai Zix and, and Taps, or Shug and Taps would roam around the map and try and set up kills. But because Wicked can't stay in the lane 1v1 against Youngbok, he's always forced to run away. They can never set up the gank, at least it's very hard for him to set it up, and it means Copenhagen Wolves just got control on the map, and now we see, of course, with Youngbok taking the inhibitor down the bottom, it's the same thing. Nobody could hold him 1v1, so they tried to push up as a team, it didn't work. As soon as someone was recalled, Copenhagen Wolves engaged, and then went for Dragon afterwards. And this is a serious, serious danger moment right now, because Copenhagen Wolves are starting to get themselves vision control around that Baron area. We just saw how quick they took down some of those turrets, how quick they pushed in, took down that dragon. That Baron is a real possibility as we approach the 30-minute mark, and Alliance are very much aware of this. 
Yeah, so Wicked is down in the bottom lane with Teleport. Of course, he will be able to join in if a fight should break out. The fact the inhibitor is gone means Yongbo can actually stay bot lane. Or at least it's going to be harder for him to push it in because he needs to go all the way to the Nexus turret to force someone to go back here. So he's just staying with the team, even though Teleport is ready. And ooh, actually moving in here. Good shield onto Amazing, just getting to safety. Well, Amazing, almost certainly the man that's going to be diving in first, has got the Randians and now has got the Hexbringer as well. Meanwhile, Trinity Force has been completed, Windwall being used to prevent those bombs rounding in there, and Vision Control being taken away from Alliance, which is why we're seeing Tams and Wicked. They started, they started the move. They started, they started the Baron. Move. They were simply waiting. They kept Jax here because they knew whenever there was a small chance to jump in. Alliance pinged it out though. They know something is happening. They're moving in. He's going to try and come around there. Quick leap away. The Baron though was taken down to half health. They're not going to stick around. Instead, they're going to dive in. Niv getting caught out there. He's going to use his ultimate. Almost pins it out there. Shook jumps in, but gets straight away exhausted. He's going to go very low. Wicked doing the damage. And meanwhile, in the backside, Tab's getting pounced on by Youngbook and Amazing. Wicked's going to try and get away. He quickly gets knocked up, jumped up, pounced down. And Copenhagen Wolves smash Alliance. They go four for one and take the Baron. And this is the Baron for them. They kept Youngbook up here with the team because of the threat of him starting it off. They needed Jax to do this Nasher here. As soon as he jumped in and started together with, I believe it was Forgiven over the wall, then Alliance, they needed to react. They had to go into this area here to try and stop it. And then Kobaneng was just collapse onto them. And Froggen, he went down very fast. Look here, look at the fight. Froggen is the first target, so squishy. <laughs> Two members actually chasing onto him. Youngbug will kill him outside of the screen. Meanwhile, up here, Wicked actually does a very good job in the backline together with Temps, getting a lot of damage onto Copenhagen Wolves. But because Froggen is already dead and Youngbug is on 50% HP, he can just come back here. And then, as we talk about with Twitch, once someone gets onto you, you're not gonna get out. Especially when it's so much gap closers that the Copenhagen Wolves are big, big bruisers, but also massive damage dealers. And the fact that the Copenhagen Wolves are only getting more stronger damaging items on those big bruisers is going to be serious, serious problems for Alliance. They're going to really struggle to claw their way back into this one up against the Baron Up team. Don't forget, there's an exposed inhibitor on that bottom wave. I almost certainly expect Copenhagen Wolves to push down there. They can move down with five members and just force Alliance to team fight around it. Or just make them back off, take the inhibitor, and then rotate around to mid lane or top lane, which is pushing in favor of Alliance for now. But Comanding Wolves can still just go down to the inhibitor. And the thing for Alliance, yes, six, he can wave clear. But Twitch, his wave clear is not exactly ideal when it comes to these clutch situations where multiple members of Comanding Wolves will pressure you while you try to clear. So it's actually only Frog in there to just keep the minions away. Remember, there's Jax in that mid lane, Youngbug. He can keep pushing. That turret's going to go down in the mid lane. He's been left alone, and he's taking that turret all in his own while the rest of the Copenhagen Wolves rotate around. It is only a 4v5 right now, but all the Copenhagen Wolves are doing is buying time. Youngbug's still pushing that wave in the mid lane. Wicked has gone there to defend it, to keep him away, but the rest of the Copenhagen Wolves are putting lots of pressure on Alliance. They're happy to take a 4 on 4 right now. Happy to take a 4 on 4 As long as they get a few hits onto this inhibitor, and as long as Youngbug can get hits onto the turret, they're fine keeping it here. A lot a lot of damage onto Unlimited though, he needs to be careful. Froggen with the watch, I've got a lot of damage. Young Bucky's gonna join them, that's gonna be a 5 on 5. Wicked's trying to move back around, he's gonna have to use some serious speed burn to get back in there. This turn inhibitor though, hasn't taken too much damage yet. Amazing, does get a couple of hits on Wicked, just keeping him at bay, but they are still not that confident despite having the Baron buff. Well again, they need to be careful because they want to get, they don't want to get in range of the Nexus. Also the fact that Alliance can come back and heal and then rejoin the fight if they escape here. So it's a bit tricky spot for Komarang Wolves to fight, but they want to get this inhibitor. Yeah, they finally got in. There's going to be the hook on Youngwook. There's the inhib going down. Super minions coming along the bot wave. Look at the chunk of top wave though. Someone is going to go back and deal with that one from the walls. They're going to rotate around. Teleport. It is going to be Youngbook going back there. Has got teleport available and just uses it to get straight up and clear out a giant wave and get himself a massive stack of gold. Youngbug on this Jax been the MVP of this game, to be honest. Everything Cobra and Wolves have done has been around him. Whenever he was winning the fights and split push, they could set something up. The Baron, of course, was due to him, due to him pushing all the way down the bottom and getting the hit so they could move to Baron. So this Jax pick here, it also really explains the Renekton ban and of course the Aurelia ban to say, you know what, Wicked, once we pick Jax and we have these two banned away, there's nothing you can play that can actually kill me in a 1v1. Well, it's funny that you should say that because SK Telecom T1K did exactly the same thing at the World Finals against Royal Gaming and completely stopped that game in its track. Shook caught out, he's going down, no way out of this one. Popped out by the Ace in the hole and forgiven mid-air. And that is going to be the Copenhagen Wolves pushing in towards that top. Yeah, good wave coming down here with Youngbug. They can go all the way into the inhibitor turret. 
I'm not sure how Alliance will defend this one. They can engage because Shook is dead. And at the same time, yeah, okay, Frog can use his ultimate to get it. But, oh, good poke onto counter action. He managed to wipe out a lot of his wind. Oh, good spray and break. Mega Inverter Bomb almost down. The poison ticking. Is it going to be enough? No, the Baron Bomb regen. Now they've hooked in Youngbook. Not sure that's the one they want. He just pounces back out with Elite Strike. We can continue to chase on this one. Hasn't used the Dragon Descent yet. Has gone, of course. He's Randy and Could try and slow someone down. But instead, they are so quick to disengage. Okay, ignore what I just said before. This is how Alliance could actually engage if the mid laner from Copenhagen Wolves decided to walk as the first person, get hooked, and they got a lot of damage onto him. So very nice hook by Nif, and Alliance actually managed to defend for now. For now, that is the key ingredient. Baron buff about to wear off, and the Wolves have managed to get themselves a couple of towers for it, so it definitely was worthwhile. They are still very, very cautious. 10,000 gold ahead, but you already saw Alliance still not dead in the water yet. Still have just enough to clear them out there. Of course, let's not forget, Frogger, if he continues to build up the way he is, nobody is stacking magic resist. Not one member right now. There's a hex drink. That's it for Amazing. So he will still do incredible amounts of damage to these champions. Yeah, 100%. You can then turn around on Frog inside and, and say there's no armor, so... But he's only one member, whereas they're five. That's true, but if someone from Comerang Wolves gets onto Frog, and we saw it in the team by yes, the Baron, yes. he's... Uh, yeah, you, you did. That's it, because there's absolutely no armor onto Frog inside. Yes, he got the exhaust, but will it be enough to save him? I'm not too sure. The key member for Alliance is going to be Taps, actually. He's doing so much damage already onto this Twitch, and he's been doing very well with his ultimate, staying in the back, hitting multiple members, picking up kills for himself, and of course Twitch going into late game. Such a beast. He's got to be careful. He's been using that flash aggressively. Yeah. And that's uh, that's dangerous when there's so many cap closers on the opposition side. We'll see how it works out for him, maybe living on the edge and feeling that Nip's lantern will be enough to keep him at bay keep him safe. Dragon's going to be up in just over a minute's time. That will be picked up by the Wolves, or certainly will be moved towards. At the moment, though, the Copenhagen Wolves are looking to invade Alliance's jungle, while Alliance keep everyone at bay. They're doing a good job of keeping the waves clear. They're trying their best to keep them at bay, but you can see all of them are slowly pushing for the Copenhagen Wolves. And with one minute on Baron here, Copenhagen Wolves can just keep Alliance here, and then whenever they feel it, feel like it, they can just move up here to this Baron area, which they already have two pink wards in. So they have full control, full vision control, so as long as they keep Alliance around the base, they can quickly rotate to Baron, pick it up with Jackson Zhao, forgiven, and take it. Youngbook shows himself on the bottom. Ace in the hole being burnt out, keeping Nip away from this mid lane turret. Good wind wall being used there. That stops all the damage from Frog, and of course we should discount that. It's a great ability up against the Ziggs, and that gives them a very easy mid lane turret, and a mid lane inner turret. So all of the turrets outside the base are now down. It's 7-4 in favor for the Wolves. And 20 seconds on the Baron, Copenhagen was backing off for now, just want to go back and buy, for, at least for some members they need to buy, need to shop, and then come down here and be very, very strong for the upcoming fight. If Alliance decides to try and stop it, they need to be very careful because it's so easy for Copenhagen Wolves if they win the fight to just push down in this very open base from Alliance side. Well, some big items coming out, of course, Infinity Edge was picked up by Caitlyn, which is forgiven. Countside got himself that last Whisper, so a lot of damage now stacked on the walls. Let's not discount the Morella. Nomicon was picked up by Froggen as well, so he wants those Grievous Wounds sticking on towards them. Alliance trying to get some poke on towards the walls, but they've got to be careful. They're getting very, very close there, and they do back away. Wolves looking to engage. But look down here in the bottom lane. Youngbuck, he doesn't even care about Wicked. You can do whatever you want. I'm just going to take your inhibitor. You can just stand there. Whenever Wicked moves close, he just bonked him in the head a few times and he had to back away. So Wicked here picking, or Youngbuck picking up an easy inhibitor once again, and the rest of Kobane Wolves just staying around this barren area. Well, they got some good poke on Unlimited there, which is why Lions have suddenly gone a little bit cocksure of themselves, pushing it. Great catch on there. Ace in the hole onto Frog and Frog and have to jump away. They're going to leap straight on towards him. Youngbuck catching up Frog and Frog and also trouble exhaust he's not gonna be enough he gets himself a kill spray and pray though coming out from taps that gets himself a revenge kill frog and forgiven taken very low they just don't have anyone to close in oh taps tries to get so close doesn't get it the, the barrier shield. there the shield coming out from unlimited he does get him down but it's gonna be the copenhagen wolves chasing on towards this one nip with the hook does save shook there it was a two for two overall both mid lane and 80 carriage going down for both teams but both Sing Zhao and Jax is still alive and very healthy, so they're staying around here. They want to continue fighting. Oh, Nif going in, uses that flay, gets caught out. Counter-Strike does manage to flash away. Counter-Strike doesn't lock anyone up. There's the lantern being used by Shook, and they are getting the hell out of dodge. 
But there's a giant wave also in the top lane here, so Lions just keeping Kobe here, Kobe Wolves around, hoping to get a lot of damage on this top lane turret. Well, it's gonna do enough, and it's gonna try and interrupt them on that Baron. They don't Ooh. wanna let them go in there. Dragon Descent will be available shortly for Wicked. He hasn't quite built up the Fury to get in there, but look at those minions on that top wave. That turret is take, being pummeled by their ranged champions, and the minions slowly coming in, but he's doing enough to take it down. Somebody has to deal with it. We do see Kaltard respawning. He's gonna clear their wave. And again, this team that we just had here, Taps, which is left by himself, spraying, praying, hammering away onto Copenhagen Wolves. Jumbuck once again went for Froggen. Yes, he killed him, but actually the exhaust delayed the kill a bit, so Jumbuck couldn't join the fight in time. Once he actually joined, Taps had already killed two members, and then yes, they killed him, but they'd only traded free to free. So, very good team fight by Alliance, actually. Team fight by Alliance, and very good position by Taps. So Alliance rotate in. They get themselves vision control of the Baron. The Copenhagen Wolves all respawn. Bottom lane. Return back towards it. Super minions all on that bottom lane. They're going to be on the Nexus turrets now. Now somebody has to deal with this from Alliance. And actually, amazing going here to try and stop them from recon. This turret is gone. The super minions got it. Copenhagen Wolves staying around here. Wicked is down to defend. There's no teleport. Wicked cannot join this fight if it were to happen. This is simply going to be interference duty for Alliance. Remember, the Mega Inferno bomb is available. No oh, unlimited takes some good poke there from Frog and Frog and does not have exhaust either. They were key ingredients in the last fight. Shook getting caught out. There's gonna be the Baron taken down so so quickly. They did manage to take down Unlimited there, but well, that was a simple pickup really. But it's again, it's the walls with the Baron. They're just gonna push on through, and I'm not sure Alliance can stop this push anymore. No, and look how how much damage Copenhagen Wolves had onto this Baron here. This wind in. Two, three seconds later, Baron was dead. That was it. Jumbo actually jumped out to get Sugar away so he could go in and smite. And the Baron just went down instantly. Ultimate was used on Froggen. Too late. Yes, they picked up a kill onto Unlimited. But there's absolutely nothing here. Copenhagen was they don't care. So they can go down here once again. Inhibitor's gonna respawn. They can pick it up and then go up to the mid lane, go to the top lane. And the worst thing for Alliance, now with only one turret left, is that whenever there's minions down here and teleport ready on Youngbuck, even if they're pushing up to the base of Copenhagen Wolves, he can teleport down behind them and just destroy this one turret and then finish the game. The Trinity Force and Play of the Rune King did just actually pick up a Thorn Mail as another Thorn Mail was completed by Amazing as well. They really are going to target Tabs. So the moment Tabs hits that Spray and Pray, it's going to hurt. And it's also the reason he, uh, Youngbug actually jumps onto Froggen, because if Froggen gets to stay in the fight alive and continue throwing out bombs, due to so little magic resist on the Copenhagen Wolves, then he will do a lot. But now they're stacking armor, so the damage from Taps is going to be less, that's why they can actually leave him alive a little bit longer, and just focus on killing Froggen instantly. Check out the double bloodthirst being picked up by Forgiven. It's not <laughs> something we often see in an LCS game, that's for sure. Making sure he gets that life still stacked in. So, I know the style of Forgiven even, it's always to go full damage. I would actually like to see him pick up a Guardian Angel, for instance, because of all the damage they got on Sing Zhao and Jax. He actually just needs to stay alive. And then after the team fight, he needs to be the one also pushing down the turrets, of course, as Caitlyn. So I would like to see a defensive item on him, but it seems he got different plans. <laughs> he doesn't care about defensive items. We do see Leandri's also being started by Unlimited. We'll see whether he completes that one, but the rest of the wards are pushing in. That inhibitor, of course, is down. He's uh, respawned, sorry, in this bottom wave. And they are going to push back in towards it. There's a big wave on the top. That's going to push in. That's going to be an area to rotate for. But they could try and end the game right here. Froggen has to be very cautious of his play. Has no flash available just yet. Does have his exhaust back up, though. But it's almost like we've seen this thing before. Copenhagen Wolves want to get his inhibitor. They got the Baron buff. Alliance trying to just hold them off. And Copenhagen Wolves, they don't really want to engage yet. They're just poking a bit of inhibitor. Every time there's a minion wave, they move in, get a few hits. And in the end, they just go and fight members and take it. There's the wind wall being used. Ace in the hole is going to come out. He actually does catch up to Nif. That's going to buy them time. They get a few good hits on there. Amazing actually tanking up the damage. He goes in, dies on towards Shook, tries to pull him in there. Nip hooking on towards Youngbuck. Youngbuck using the counter strike, but they are backing out. The Mega Inferno bomb will land. And well, all Young Copenhagen Wolves are going to have to back out of that one. Enough damage done. Now they have to rotate quickly towards that top lane to keep them away. The Wolves are not backing away yet. They can stay. They got health region from the Baron Buff here, of course. And of Building health region onto Kalta and into Youngbok whenever they hit the minions. Of course, Amazing doing the same. And Alliance invested the Spray and Pray. That's the key ultimate in these fights. It's gone now, so it means Copenhagen and Wolves, they feel confident staying around. They're going to try and catch out. Frog in the key now for the Wolves. He's the man they're going to try and focus on. That's where Shin Zhao may dive in. They see Youngbok leaping on towards him. That inhibitor, well, it only needs a couple of hits. That's not 
Well, it is the focus, but it's not really the focus. The champions are the focus. The end game is the focus. They're using that win wall again to take down the inhib. They're going to try and rotate around there. Ooh, Wicked getting caught out. They choose not to go for him as a target. They're just rotating up to this mid lane here. It's, they need to push it down, of course. Alliance, plenty of time to rotate themselves and defend. But yes, they got a turret now. But a turret against these tanks with so much armor is not going to do a lot in these fights. So it's actually going to be the same deal now. Covenant was moving in, get a few hits on the turret, Alliance trying to push them off, and then just do the same dance over and over again. So we'll see how it works out for them. Alliance have been chasing this game the entire time from the very beginning, from that very early mistake. It's level one, level one, level two play, pushing down those turrets, the top versus the bottom turrets. The bottom one's always going to be weaker, and once they chose not to recall when that inhibitor turret is being hit, it's opened up every opportunity for a Copenhagen Wars in this game. Yeah, so turrets are weaker, of course, on Zing Zhao versus Kha'Zix when it comes to pushing turrets. Zing Zhao is so much stronger, so they were just very, very fast at pushing down the turrets. And it was a big mistake by Alliance. The mistake, plus the Shivana pick, actually, in my opinion, is the two keys to why they're losing this game. Well, the Wolves, of course, are going to buy themselves time. They know they've got super minions coming along that bottom way. That's going to get cleared in a moment. There's no Nexus turret on that side. There's only one standing, and that's buying time for this 4-1 split, keeping the pressure, keeping their options open, can keep on pushing in. Ziggs with the wave player, yes, it's great, but you've got to keep that Jax at bay in that top wave. And the Alliance, they're going to move around. They're all five members going to try and push in towards this one, but they keep leaving Youngbuck open in that top wave. They can't push too deep. And again, the Wolves buying time. Look at the bottom wave now. Tabs has had to go deal with those Super Minions. And also the power... Spray and pray. Yes. No, no, he wasn't. Didn't no, he use it. Don't worry. <laughs> that would have been weird if you used the yeah, Super Minions. I, I, was, I was confused for a moment. <laughs> yeah, no. But we also saw for Copenhagen Wolves with their comp, their disengage potential. Youngberg actually getting a lot of hits onto the... Or get a few hits onto the turret. Meanwhile, they do the same in mid. Alliance are being pulled from pillar to post. Shook goes in. Mega Inferno Bomb does land. Does good damage. But again, Baron Buff worn off this time. But the speed boost comes out. Meanwhile. Youngbook jumps back on towards that top turret, realizes he cannot take it down and has to try and make the escape. Counter Why? strike will come out there. Wicked goes for it, but quickly gets pulled away from that one. Wind wall's gonna be enough to disengage and the wolves back away for now. Again, very strong disengage from Copenhagen Wolves with this calm here, just popping the speed buff onto the team. They run out. Wind wall, of course, can block things, block the hook from Nif. There's so many disengaged potentials for Copenhagen Wolves, and then Co uh, that Youngbok just stayed, got a few hits on the turret, backed out, and then Wicked. A bit of a desperate ultimate onto him, just back out in Yeah, they're not done yet. The Maze is sticking around, Yombo is sticking around, using the life steal, taking away everything from Alliance's jungle, making sure they don't quickly push out, get those wards placements down. They're making sure they have no reason to go back and buy, honestly, because they have next to all of their items. They've both got, what, a thousand plus gold on them. So they may actually go back. Yombo's got 1700 gold on him, so he may try and change that Dawn's play for something useful. So they got. Both turrets down to 50%. They got the inhibitor bot lane with the last bound buff. Now they're waiting for the next one to spawn in 25 seconds. Already setting up for it, getting some vision control. Alliance can try and go and stop it again, but it's it's even more risky than last time because they're 5,000 gold behind again. And at the same time, if there's a minion down this bottom lane, Yomo can just teleport down if Alliance is staying around the, the Baron area to kill the Nexus turret. So from Alliance side, either they should just give up this Baron, try and steal with Shook, or they should just try and push up the mid lane, the mid lane themselves, get a turret or something. It is exactly what they're doing. Baron spawns and Alliance were shoving up there. Youngbuck aware of this one. Youngbuck on his own. Look how quick the Baron's going down. That's gone in seconds. Teleport used by Wicked. May as well cancel it. It's exactly what he's done. Now he's stuck down the bottom wave. His team are fighting. They're in a four on five. This is oh. a terrible position for Alliance. Frogan tries to flash out. He's got the Guardian Angel, but they're simply going to spawn him back into a very angry Jax. Youngbuck counter strike ready and waiting. The moment he spawns, he just gets exploded and that was a clean clean fight for the Wolves. Forgiven went down but it doesn't matter the rest of the team could push on through for the win. Yeah Forgiven went down here. Yomba actually recalled it. with the teleport he can just join in with his team push down there's no minions actually so they need to just tank this turret and Wicked want to try and hold them off. Taps meanwhile oh the terror there's the teleport actually. Yes of course because that bottom wave is just going to get pushed on through. Inhibitor has respawned once again but it's not going to last too long because the rest of the Wolves are just going to bully it down. There is a wave coming in. They're going to tank this one through. We talked about it earlier on how strong they actually are. They can tank this one through. Amazing. Barely being untouched by this one. He tanks down that inhibitor. That's another turret down. The inhib will follow. Still 30 seconds on Frog. And that's really the only man they care about right now. Tams is up. 
but I'm not too sure he wants to jump in because they will all turn tail and leap on him the second he shows. Another inhibitor turret going down. The wolves are just wrecking the entire Alliance base. And this was exactly why Alliance shouldn't have tried to fight for the Baron. Now, wolves going in. Shook gonna get caught out here, takes the lands and tries to get away, but while that's all happening, Tabs gets focused on quick turnaround. Kaltard leaping in and just dropping the AD carry where he stands. The third inhibitor will be going down here. The Copenhagen Wolves are looking so strong in this game. It looks like it could be theirs. They're gonna back away for now. I don't think they're gonna finish it here, but the Alliance are pretty much down and out. There is no AD carry here, so they can actually go onto Frog, and he's an easy target. They're gonna jump on him. The exhaust was used. He gets locked up. He goes down. It's gonna be a kill picked up by Amazing. The Copenhagen Wolves are wrecking Alliance's dreams right now. They were set up as that's a it. team to win, but right now it's a team that's lost. It's going to be 1-0 for the Copenhagen Wolves in this quarterfinals. They are one step away from facing a great, great semi-final matchup. What a turnaround and what a match, really, for the Copenhagen Wolves. A fantastic start to this series. Copenhagen Wolves completely outplayed Alliance on the map. And also with this Jax pick, there was nothing Wicked could do to respond to Jax. He needed help from everyone else, and whenever someone tried to help him, the Copenhagen Wolves just punished him elsewhere. So, champ select went in favor of Cobra will simply due to this Jax pick. And at the same time, the way they played the early game, the way they played the map, they were just one step ahead of Alliance all the time.